Hey everybody, how's it going? Bully Scholarship, we here. Welcome back for more Let's Play Paper Mario. If you weren't here last time, we got to Yoshi's Island, did some exploring, found Mount Lava Lava, but unfortunately, we do not have a way to access the entrance to the mountain, so we came back to the village for some uh, clues, and now the Yoshis are freaking out, and it looks like the Yoshi kids pulled a little stunt on them, and now they ran to the jungle. So, without further ado, let's go and see if we can find them. Well, that was interesting. But yeah, so today I, uh, me and a buddy of mine got to hang out. We haven't, we haven't hung out for quite a few years, but, uh, we've been, we've been hanging out for quite a, like, a multiple years, but, uh, it's been a little while we've been so busy. Get back here this instant, you old ingrate! So, uh, that was kind of fun today. Um, him and I were a lot, we played a lot of Pokemon together back in the day, so that was always fun, and then we got to talk about the good old days of Pokemon Emerald. Hey, you down there, look up here if you hear me. Oh, looks like they threw that fish guy up in the tree. Oh, this is so embarrassing, I'm stuck in this tree. Could you help me out somehow? Sure, I can, dude, whatever you say. Let me just slap you down. Come on now, try harder. There we go. Whew, I'm safe. I feel like one big eight. Thanks for getting me out of that tree. I think I'll be okay now. Oh. Oh, those little, I was chasing those nine <laughs> Don't know how dangerous it gets in the jungle. I have to find them before they get in too deep. As for you, you better get back to the village too. It's dangerous out here. Why on earth did you come to the jungle anyway? By raising Mario's hand, he's able to tell people everything within two seconds. Oh, that's always interesting. Well, so you're looking for those little rascals as well. Then I don't see why we don't just look for them together. Ooh, they really don't understand the dangers of the jungle, so we have to find them soon. Oh my, how impolite. I haven't even asked your name. What is it, pray tell? Mario, huh? Hmm, well I've never heard of you before. You must be from far away or something. Enjoy the- enjoy lovely Lava Lava Island. That's what I'd usually say to a visitor anyway. But first, could you help me find these boys? Sure I can. Sushi, join your party. What a fitting name. Uh, press down C on platforms, and you can cross water. Yes, that's like what we saw in uh, Toad Town Tunnels. And then you can press it again, and you'll go under the water. There's some items down there, or you can go under bridges. <sighs> Stuff like that. And in battle, she has a couple different abilities. Just like every other party member. But anyway, let's, uh, let's try out her ability. So here's what we can do. I know this is always in, uh, like the demo at the beginning of the game if you don't press start. You could do this. I remember seeing this. I was like, whoa, that's so awesome. But, uh, it's not so quite a bit, you know, pretty far into the game at least. But let's go up here and, uh, snag ourselves a little star piece. Alright, we're gonna get that. And I believe there's a letter in this tree. Yes. Letter to Rustine Toad Town. I thought I had something else. Oh, no, never mind. That was the dictionary. Anyway, let's go over here. Looks like the final babal. Looks kind of green still. Yo, what's up? Thanks for waking me up. This island's so nice, isn't it? It's the perfect place for napping. Perfect temperature. I'm a ball. My job is to fill this world with flowers. Nice, huh? I want you to take the seed. Or rather, that's what I want to say to you. Fortunately, the seed is not quite ready yet. Don't worry, though. It'll be ready any time now. Waiting in such a warm, comfy place can't be all bad, right? Come and grab the seed later. I'm pretty generous, so I'll be here giving stuff to people. All right. So we'll come back later for that last seed. Uh, that's just fine. But yeah, uh, I, I have some interesting uh, stories to tell you about that seed later once we uh, come back for it. But that won't be for a couple more parts, I imagine. So anyway, let's head back over here and see what else we can do. Uh, let's hop on this dock since uh, now we can actually move around in the jungle because now there's going to be a lot of stuff like this where we can uh, hop on with sushi, especially in this chapter. Make plenty of use of that. Ooh, looks like there's a badge in that block. Let's get that. We're gonna have to fight this bunghole. Might as well get a first strike. But anyway, me and my friend, we were talking about the good old days when we played Pokemon Emerald, you know, hardcore, you know, like crazy. Um, I still think Pokemon Emerald is one of the best games in the Pokemon series, but uh, we played it a lot because we were both trying to get all of the, uh, the silver, or the symbols in the uh, battle frontier. And, uh, Ow, that was <laughs> such a <laughs> lame attack. But anyway, uh, we're trying to get all the symbols in the battle frontier, and both of us actually did eventually get 
all seven silver symbols. However, we had no luck, and along, and my cousin as well. The, the three of us were really the Pokemon people, and now my cousin doesn't know this other friend of mine. Power Quake. Ooh, that's a great badge. But we'll equip that a little bit later. Anyway, um... Oh no, that's a saying. Well, you know what? Let's equip it now. I don't care. Oh, I can't pause it while I'm underwater. But anyway, um... Yeah, the, me and my two friends and I were pretty much the three that really liked Pokemon. I had another friend. He played it a fair amount, nowhere near as much as me and my other two friends. But anyway, that's irrelevant. Um, but uh, all three of us, I believe, ended up getting all the symbols. Um, I think my friend got it first, I got it, and then my cousin got it shortly after I did. So we all helped each other out, and that was kind of fun. Um, we just exchanged some ideas for teams, and that's the fun of it. But, uh, yeah, Pokemon Emerald just nailed it. Um, I think I really liked it because, first of all, Ruby and Saf uh, Sapphire version was the first Pokemon game I ever owned and played. Because before that, I, I knew about the games, but I never had really any interest in them. I thought they were dumb, or I probably just didn't understand them, I imagine. Okay, that's probably some overkill right there. <laughs> but, um, I probably just didn't understand, you know, their purpose and... The, the really awesome fun in them, really. Um, I was probably unaware of how cool they were, and I probably didn't really understand RPGs back then, um, except for Paper Mario, but besides that, they're probably too complex for me anyway. But anyway, uh, so I... Oh, man. We're just gonna have to do nothing, because that spike's gonna stab Sushi. Wow, these guys have tough timing on that attack. Anyway. Um, I probably didn't understand them, but I remember, you know, I, I liked the cards and I liked the TV show back in the day. It's just, I never really had any interest in the, uh, games for some reason. And I don't know. But one day my cousin, I believe, um, he, yeah, he got a version of, Sa a Sapphire version from his grandma. I believe it was his grandma or someone for either his birthday or Christmas, I don't remember. But, uh, oh geez, that guy's not giving hearts. I'd show that off. Um, but uh, he got an extra Sapphire version for his birthday or Christmas or whatever, and he ended up giving it to me. And I was like, oh my gosh, thanks. And, even, you know, I, I had some interest in it, because I actually kind of wanted to see what the game was all about, and see if maybe I would like it, and imagine if that didn't happen. Maybe I would have never played the Pokemon games. Who knows? So, that was really cool of him, and... Uh, I'm still thankful about that to this day, because I have a feeling I wouldn't have gone for the Pokemon games if that uh, were the case, and I would have missed out on some great RPGs, some of the best, and, uh, but anyway, so I got Sapphire version, and then I, uh, struggled through that game, but I was able to beat it, I mean, I beat the, the champion and everything, and I ended up getting a lot of Pokemon on that, and then eventually I, uh, obtained Ruby version, we're just gonna upgrade Sushi here. Yes, we would like to upgrade this member. That would be wonderful. But yeah, eventually I purchased Ruby version at some point or another. Um, I didn't. I liked Sapphire more just because the ex I like the exclusive bear. I like Kyogre way more than Groudon. Um, <laughs> I remember I had such utter failures for uh, pronouncing the names like Kyogre. I called like, oh man, what was it? Was it Ky oh, what the heck did I call? I just thought of it. Well, Kyogre. Koigar or something. <laughs> Koigar. Oh man, that was hilarious. Boo -hoo -hoo. Well, let's head over here. I, someone's like freaking out. Oh, no. No. Oh, shoot. We had to fight these guys. There's actually enemies under some of those, uh, the bluish green colored bushes, but that's alright. Um, hmm. Let's see what Mystery does, just for the heck of it. Who knows? I guess it's just a healing item, but... Yeah, that works. No, oh, oh, okay, that worked. Oh, okay. Well, I guess they won't hit me. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, um... Yeah, so I, I struggled through uh, Sapphire version. I figured it out, sort of. Not really, but I figured it out, I guess. <laughs> um, I don't... I guess I caught Rayquaza. I don't remember if I did or not the first time through it. Maybe I did, but... Anyway, uh, so I played through that, and then I got Ruby, played through that, didn't like it as much as Sapphire for exclusives, and then at some point I started buying the old games. I don't know what inspired me, maybe my cousin did, because I believe he had, uh, 
Either at least like a red version and maybe like silver and then... Oh yeah, I remember. Um, when uh, we were having a garage sale, my uh, my cousin who lived way up north uh, had some stuff. Because my, my grandma and grandpa would often come to the garage sale and, and sell stuff as well because they lived out in the country where garage sales don't really work too well. <laughs> um, you know, it's kind of hard to have one when it's way the heck out there. But uh, anyway... Um, so my cousin had some stuff to sell as well, and, uh, oh crap, this is <laughs> kind of risky. Oh well. That's alright, that's what, that's what we live for. We're just gonna use Star Storm and just kill both of these guys, because I don't want to die. Anyway, uh, so he had, my cousin had some stuff to sell, and in there was an original Game Boy... Which, I mean, I didn't need, but I bought it anyway, because I wanted it. And, uh, I mean, they were cheap prices. And then a, a boxed, pretty much untouched copy of Pokemon Gold, which I instantly grabbed as soon as my grandparents showed up and started unloading his stuff. I was like, yep, I, I'm going to buy, like, half of his stuff. I want it all. <laughs> so then, uh, and then he also, I believe, had the strategy guide for Pokemon Gold. And let's see, I can't remember if I bought anything else. That might have been it, but pretty much anything Pokemon he had, I bought. And that night, I had some good times running around and exploring the uh, uh, the Johto region. That was fun. I it was so scary. We were playing hide and seek, and there was this weird plan that trapped me here. Suji, you were right. This jungle is really dangerous. I'm sorry I disobeyed you. Thanks for coming to get me. I'm going home now. What? <laughs> I had to come here and touch a bush, and now he'll go home. Whatever. Anyway, um, as I was saying, let's see, we're gonna go, wait, can I go up here to the, to the north? I believe I can. Yeah, that's a path. We'll go up there. But, um, anyway, yeah. So, I bought all that, and that sort of got me started in the older games, and then eventually I found another copy of gold at, like, the Cancer Society garage sale. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> and anyway, I uh, found that, and I'm not sure. I guess I bought a used copy of Silver at probably GameStop because they were still selling good games at this time. They weren't just selling only modern stuff like they do nowadays, which is lame. They uh, they were still selling more retro stuff, even though it was still pretty old at the time. I mean, this was. Oh, I don't know, maybe early, really early 2000s, I imagine, something like that. But anyway, let's go up here. And we're going to switch to Watt. And we're going to hop up here. Because I believe there is a pipe up in here. Yep. Yeah, let's get a free coin. And, oh... I really don't want to fight this guy, but I guess I will. I'll cut this. Anyway, yeah, what I was saying was, uh, I, I guess I bought a copy of Pokemon Silver somewhere, and I don't know. <laughs> I honestly don't remember. But now we're going to use Watt, because we hear someone freaking the crap out. There's a Yoshi. Hmm, interesting. There's also a rock here. What if we can blow it up with Bombat? Hmm, Let's see if that did anything. I was can't remember if no, I guess it can't. It's just a random rock there. It's probably just to bug you while you're wandering around in the dark. But anyway, let's go talk to this Yoshi kid up here who's freaking out. Here's this flower that spun around I thought it was way cool, so I got on. And I spun around and around and I was up in the air and flying and I ended up here. I didn't know how I got here. It was so dark and scary I couldn't find a way out. Thanks for coming to get me out of here. I can see how to get out now, so I'm going straight home. Yeah, get your butt home, you little a little prankster bunghole. Anyway, yeah. Um, so, at some point I acquired Pokemon Silver, and I don't, I honestly don't remember if I just bought yellow, gold, and blue at, I'm guessing I just buy at GameStops or, or, or at uh, uh, Discland, which is the local game store that is actually good. It's not GameStop, but, uh, so I'm guessing I just went to that, to one of those places and found them. I, and then, but anyway, so I, I own most of the versions of Pokemon, and eventually at some point I found a crystal version. I don't know where or when, but I acquired that somehow, and now I have... You know, for a while I had multiple copies. I had like three copies of Pokemon Blue, and I think three of Gold. But I sold 
one of them of blue and one of the, the gold versions as well. So I have a maximum of two of each version, except for Emerald, which is one of, if not my favorite, one of my favorite uh, versions of Pokemon. It's such a great game. There's so much good stuff. Oh, crap. Okay, anyway, killed that fuzzy, got a dizzy dial, yay. Anyway, um, oh, let's talk to this Yoshi kid before I continue my Pokemon story. Ah, sniff, sniff. <laughs> we were playing I and see, and I had to be it, but I couldn't find anyone. Oh, that sucks. I totally feel this kid right now. I was wandering around, and I got lost. You are right, Sushi. The jungle is really scary. Thanks for coming all the way out here to look for me. I'll be a good boy from now on and listen to you. Mario, will you be it for hide and seek instead of me? I'm going home now. You got it, dude. But yeah. Um. Anyway, one day, uh, I rem I don't know if we were coming home from up north. We were coming home from vacation. I honestly don't remember. But at some point, Pokemon Emerald was coming out, and I was ready to buy it the day it came out. So I remember we stopped at a Target on the way home, because then we were stopping somewhere else, I guess. And I bought it, and then I'm not sure if we stopped at someone's grad party or what, but whatever, whoever it was or wherever it was, I didn't go in because I just sat in the van playing Pokemon Emerald because that's all I cared about, and that became probably my favorite Pokemon game, at least in the newer generation. I, I don't know, I still love Gold and Silver because I've played the crap out of those, but uh, um, is definitely one of my favorite ones of the Game Boy Advance. It's probably my favorite one of the Game Boy Advance generation, I'd say. So, good stuff right there. But anyway, uh, yeah, we, um, I just played the snot out of that game. And eventually, after I had beaten the main story and, you know, done everything, um, I got to finally see what they were really revealing with this, uh, sort of enhanced remake of... Uh, Ruby and Sapphire, you know, it's just, or it's not really, I guess this is the enhanced version, it's not really a remake, because it's the same generation and system, but, uh, sort of just the, uh, the enhanced version of Ruby and Sapphire, and that was the Battle Frontier, and holy crap, that I have never seen, in very few games have I seen any, you know, post-story fun like that, that was just amazing, just so much fun, and challenging enough where you worked your butt off, and you spent a lot of time, and when you finally got one of the symbols, you were really, really excited. Cause, believe me, that that was a well, that was hard. <laughs> um, I remember the first symbol I got was the Battle Factory, which uh, you would actually store your own Pokemon. They would hold them for you, and you would actually choose from a, a set of them and rent them, which was really cool. I thought. And so you'd have to uh, trade Pokemon and do stuff like that. I love this Zap Zap badge, by the way. These fuzzies haven't attacked me since uh, the chapter began, cause I've just been a uh, Zap tapping him. It's awesome. Let's see if I can kill this one so he doesn't keep sending in more of his buddies. There we go. Excellent. But, um, yeah, the Battle Factory, you'd rent Pokemon, and then after each battle, you could trade one of yours for the person that your the opponent that you beats Pokemon, which was really cool, I thought. Come on. Oh, no. Wow. That was weird. He just, like, got rid of his weapon. Well, whatever. Anyway, um, I didn't know they did that. So now are they just regular shy guys? Let's see. Yep. <laughs> they changed from jungle guys to shy guys. They like rip off their Tarzan pants or whatever. That's weird. Now he's just gonna do a shy guy attack. That's funny. I've never I don't remember that ever happening. Interesting. You learn a lot from doing a let's play, I swear. Even if it's your favorite game of all time. But anyway, um so the Battle Factory so I trade Pokemon and uh, pretty much what your goal is is to reach the frontier brain or or you know, the leader of each facility, because there are seven facilities in total. Uh, one of them is the Battle Factory, then there's the Battle Tower, the Battle Pyramid, the Battle Dome, the Battle Pike, the Battle Palace, and the Battle Arena. Oh, I can't believe I actually got all of those. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, those are the seven facilities. Each of them have different rules. Um, you know, one of them, you don't even get to control your Pokemon. You just, it's just based on their nature and what they do. Uh, it, it's a really cool, really, really cool uh, idea, I thought. So, anyway, that was a great idea, I thought, with uh, the Pokemon games. But anyway, let's see. We're just going to head back to this dock, I think. I don't think we can go... S oh, yeah, we're going to go south here. Anyway, um, yeah, definitely a great idea. Oh, yeah, there's a Yoshi sleeping in a tree here, I believe. No? Oh, okay, I guess it's a different tree. 
They just try to trick you there. I'll meet you guys after this fight. Okay, anyway, um, they really did a great job with that. So the Bow Factory, pretty much, each level has a certain amount of win streaks you have to get in order to reach the Frontier Brain. We gotta smash this, and then we'll go get the Yoshi of that area, which was kind of cool, and it was very challenging. So, uh, anyway, uh, 21 wins in a row, or 20 wins. Uh, there were seven battles to a round, so at the end of the third round, you could fight the Battle Factory leader, and that was Noland, and he had rented Pokemon too, which is cool. <sighs> Morning! Hey, it's Mario. What's the matter with you? You were looking for me? Oh, Sushi too? We were playing hide and seek and I got really sleepy, so I figured I'd take a nap here at a tree. <laughs> There's nothing to worry about. The jungle's not so bad. I'm starting to get a little bit lonely though, so maybe I ought to head back home. Bye! Wow, he didn't learn his lesson, that little, little cowboy. Anyway, um, so I got to Nolan, the frontier leader of the Battle Factory, and I beat him. And the, the cool thing was, um, in Ruby and Sapphire, at the sort of the post story thing, ah, someone help me! The post game was the Battle Tower. I'm so scared, I wanna go home! That was the only portion of the Battle uh, like Frontier that you got in Ruby and Sapphire. It was just the Battle Tower on its own little island. Oh, we gotta fight these guys. It's the Piranha Plant dance. Yeah, we fought these guys in the Forever Force. Just, now they're more powerful, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Not much different, though. <laughs> but that's alright. We'll just kill them. And anyway, uh, so I got to the Frontier Brain, and if you beat them, you'll get a symbol as well as more battle points, which are things you can exchange for really unique prizes compared to the ones you'd normally get, I guess. Um... Let's see, we're gonna use Refresh. I'm not sure if that heals poison or not, but might as well heal up a little bit and get some flower points. But, um, got to Noland, and... Oh yeah, but anyway, what I was talking about was the Battle Tower. Oh, that does heal poison, cool. And in Ruby and Sapphire, the Battle Tower had two options for the levels. You could do level 50 or level 100. So, if you, if you choose level 100, if all your Pokémon aren't level 100, tough luck, you gotta fight a bunch of 100s. But a cool update they did with uh, Emerald is that they changed the level 100 to open level where your opponent's Pokemon would just be equal to the highest level Pokemon in your party. So hopefully you would be smart enough to train all your Pokemon to the same level, whether that's 60 or 80 or 72, whatever the heck you like. But uh, that was a smart choice on their opinion, on their part. Because training everything to 100 is... That's a big step up if your Pokemon are just over 50. Like, if they're 51, you couldn't do level 50, you'd have to do 100, and that would... You'd get destroyed, so then you'd have to waste a bunch of time training them, and that's not fun. So, open level is definitely a great update with that game. Uh, what? Are they all gone? I'm sorry for disobeying you and going into the jungle. I'll be a good boy now. When you say stuff, Sushi, I'll listen, I swear. Thanks for saving me. I'm going straight home now. Yeah, you better, you little cowboy. Yay, we got all the Yoshis. All right. Let's see, is there anything else over here? Um, let me just see if there's an invisible block. Nope, doesn't look like it. But it's worth checking. So that was one of the great things. But anyway, once you uh, would win uh, any round, like if you win all seven battles or eight battles or whatever, you would get battle points, which you exchange for cool prizes. Such as, oh, there's a lot of stuff, like, you can get different dolls for your house or for your secret base, or you can get uh, uh, TMs or whatever, or, uh, unique hold items for your Pokemon to use in the Battle Frontier, or use them whenever. So there's some really cool things there. So it was definitely one of the greatest post-game, or post, uh, you know, story uh, things available, so they definitely did a nice job with that. So let's head back. Okay, maybe uh, let's go over here. <laughs> not sure if we can avoid that guy or not. Maybe we can. Uh, yeah, we might be able to actually. I believe this will take us. Ah, that's right. Takes us right over here. We can skip that guy and let's head back into the village. And we'll just take the beach method. Oh, there's the whale. No, we're not fighting you, Fuzzy. Screw it. Go away. This spitty thing really helps. Alright, we're back in Yoshi's Island, so let's see. Seems like everything's all peaceful now, and the Yoshis aren't like crying and running around and freaking out. So let's see, let's talk to the uh, one with the feather in his hair. Or in his head. 
I guess it's not in his head, but... Uh, I guess we'll just talk to one of these guys for now. Kids are all back. I was heartbroken thinking of how scared and lonely they must have been. But as soon as they got back, they just said that they were hungry. Pfft, kids, how typical. I suppose it's natural for children to be interject, but they need to be safe, too. That's true. They never learn. Oh, by the way, our village leader wants to thank you. You better go see him. Oh, maybe he's back, actually, over here. I bet he's sitting at this table. No, oh, there he is. Yeah, the leader has the feather in his ear back ahead. I don't know. Mario, I must thank you. You have saved the children of the village, and I feel no expression of our gratitude can be enough. You truly are a hero. We deeply appreciate your valor. I've heard from your companion, Colorado, that you wish to go to Mount Lava Lava. Since you have blessed our village with your kindness, I will show you the best way to reach the volcano. Please come this way. Okay. Uh, I thought it was somewhere around here. Oh, yes, I found it. Here it is. Take it, please. The Jade Raven. The Jade statue of a raven that Yoshi's Island leader gave to you. Well, yes, that's a pretty straightforward description. <laughs> Whatever events beyond our control occur to the island, we ask the help of Raphael the Raven, the island's master. If anyone can help you reach the volcano, it's definitely Raphael the Raven. He lives in the depths of this island. If you place that jade raven in the statue of Raphael, the way to the depths of the jungle will appear. I haven't been to see Raphael since I was a young Yoshi. I remember that it was incredibly difficult to find him because of the jungle's trees and shub shrubs covering the way. Blech. I'm sure you'll find the path. May all your wishes come true. Well, thank you. Wait just one minute. You must have one heck of a story behind you, Mario. Why in the world would you want to go to Mount Lava Lava? It's very hot and very dangerous in the volcano. If you aren't extremely careful and lucky, you'll be roasted to a golden brown. But you don't care. You guys are going there anyway. I do not approve of this. Oh! You're going to the volcano because you want to save the princess from some bad guys? Well, what a touching story. <laughs> Romantic stories like that just touch a soft spot in this heart of mine. That does it. I can't let you go alone. I, Sushi, will be your side and be at your side until the end. You needn't worry, Mario. I love taking care of others. If you plan on getting through this jungle, you'll need me anyway. That's true. Come, Mario. That volcano isn't getting any cooler. All right. Now we got Sushi. We got the Jade Ravens. So now we have a way to, uh, well, we have a way to find a way to get into Mount Lava Lava. It's, it's like a like a cipher or whatever national treasure we need to find a way to find a way to read the map to find a way to read the map uh if i had that clip i would include it here but that'd probably be copyright anyway if you've seen national treasure you know what i mean but anyway guys next time we're going to venture back into the jungle to find Raphael the raven's shrine and hopefully get some help to get into the mount lava lava and then we can uh, start exploring it look for that last uh well, not the last, but the fifth uh, Star Spirit. So, anyway, guys, I thank you all for watching. This has been Boy Scholarship Wii. Hope you have a wonderful day. And, as always, guys, keep gaming and peace out. We'll see you next time.